I've begun to wonder what Wall Street knows about the real estate market that all of us regular folks just haven't caught on to. So let's take a look. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand homes and I'm one of the state's top real estate agents. If you have any questions, well, then I'm here to help. So what does Wall Street know that they're not telling us regular guys? I don't think it's a secret that those guys on Wall Street are not a big fan of losing money and are generally ahead of the economic curve. So let's start out with the obvious. Have you seen what's going on with the stock prices of the top real estate companies in the United States? Let's take a look. Compass's stock is up 82.86% in the last month from 245 a share to 448 a share. Man, that's a great return. Remax's stock is up 22.6% in the last month from 1936 a share to 2374 a share. Redfin stock is up an astounding 98.1%. They've gone from $4.77 a share to $9.45. Anywhere, which is the owner of brands like Coldwell Banker, Better Homes and Garden, Century 21, well, their stock's up from 670 a share to 903 a share, which is a 34.8% increase in just one month. And EXP, which as a quick disclosure, I actually own shares of EXP, really, have seen their stock increase by 45.8%, from 1157 a share to 1686 a share. It looks like Wall Street, well, they're making some big bets that the housing downturn is over. And when I say big bets, I mean they're big bets and they're industry wide. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, then I really appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference with those YouTube gods. And by the way, subscribing, it doesn't hurt either. What could Wall Street see that all the smart doom and gloomers don't see? Maybe it's that we've underbuilt residential housing units for the last decade to the tune of three and a half to four million units. It could be that they see the pending home sales, well, they're increasing. Or maybe it's that they've noticed that builders, while they have inventory that they're currently working through, they didn't overbuild like they did back in 2007 and they're not going to need to do a fire sale. Maybe they've come to the conclusion and seen that the data from the home buyers today and since 2008 really have been a lot more qualified and much more likely capable of weathering a financial storm. If they're more capable of weathering that financial storm, then that means there's not going to be a financial crisis with a wave of foreclosures. It could be that they've seen inventory levels in the United States remaining, historically speaking, very low. Yes, they've increased in many markets, but they're nothing like they were in the financial crisis. Or it could be that they see the inverted yield curve and know that the Fed is about to start decreasing interest rates, which will increase buyer demand. Did you know there's actually a housing price futures market? I guess if there's a bet to be made, well, then Wall Street, they're going to figure out how to make it. But the CME Housing Composite Index bottomed out in quarter four of 2022 and has been rallying ever since. It seems that Wall Street's become very, very bullish pushing up the housing index as well as housing stocks. And the question is, why? What do they know that we don't? Redfin recently reported that the housing market has begun to recover from a trough in the second week of November, with buyers returning at a faster pace than sellers. They also cite that the number of customers requesting first showing requests has increased by 17%. Wall Street is also probably looking at the big increase in mortgage applications that we have seen in the recent weeks, while pending home sales actually increased by 3% in December. They are also most likely pointing to all the data that shows that bidding wars, well, they're back. Right now, the market bears want to point out to the home builders and them needing to slash prices and decrease their housing permits as well as their starts. But what they don't understand or well, are too lazy to actually figure out is that they are always caught in a lag. They're often caught with their pants down when the market turns. They then need to work through their inventory levels while stopping or slowing down the amount of additional inventory they're, they're going to put onto the market. They become much more conservative as they work through this inventory while the market, it works through the downturn. The starts and permits are going to stabilize, but as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be at a lag. I think six months. Ultimately, the builders, they're the last straw that these doom and gloomers that they can hold on to. The spring market, it's coming. Sellers seem to be coming to the market slowly while buyer demand is picking up very quickly. And that's before they see any substantial mortgage rate decreases. Yes, interest rates are at four to five month lows, but we're still in the high fives to low sixes, which by the way, if you're a home buyer, then you probably don't want interest rates to go down any further. Confused? Fair enough. 
If that's the case, then you might want to watch this video and find out why. Again, my name is Jeffrey Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I'm your guy. All my contact information, it's in the description below, or you can reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com. But seriously, find out why you don't want interest rates to go down any further. Watch this video and let me know what you think.